Welcome to lesson number four in our series of Introduction to Wood Turning, Wood Turning 101. What we're going to do today is hold things on the lathe in another totally different way. I just want to keep showing you different ways that you can mount things for spindle work. I felt the need to clean up a little bit here. I've used a little silicon spray on the ways. So this tool rest moves much more freely and without the squeaking that we've heard in the past. So maybe things will be a little bit better in that sense. Today we're going to hold uh, a bottle stopper on the lathe. Now I know there's stainless steel types that can be very fancy, very nice. There's silicon stoppers. But what we're going to make is a very simple, basic bottle stopper. And what we've done is we have cut some maple dowels to two and three quarter inches length. Maple, not birch. If you go to the hardware store and pick up a dowel, high probability it's birch and not maple. We want the harder, more resistant wood, and it makes a better uh, stopper plug. And then we bought some uh, corks that have the 3 8 hole already drilled in them. So ahead of time, I have mounted that dowel into a block of wood. And I'm now going to use a collet to hold this on the lathe. An entirely new technique for us. Now, the collet I'm going to use is a Morris taper, and it's a 3 8 hole. This metal, which you see slit, will compress and hold that dowel very tightly as it's pulled into the headstock of the lathe. So the dowel goes into here like that. It goes through here, and I have a drawbar, which is no more than a piece of 3 8 16 all thread, which you pick up at the local hardware store, cut to the proper length. Goes through the headstock, put a washer and a nut on the other end. And by tightening that, I begin to pull this in. I also can help by locking my tailstock and using the tailstock quill to push it in further and then secure it. Now you're going to have to cut a drawbar for your own lathe. Uh, some of our lathes here in the school, as you can see, take a much longer drawbar. So you put the collar chuck in, measure it, cut it off to the right length. So what I'm going to do today is actually turn this. Now between centers, because we want to have the best support we possibly can. So I'm going to turn it round. I'm going to give it some shape. We'll put a little finish on it. And the tools I'm going to be using, again, starting off with my spindle roughing gouge to rough it out to get it generally round. Because I want to get this end down here about the size of the cork, I'm going to use a parting tool to set some dimensions here. And then most of the shaping is going to be done with my shallow fluted or spindle gouge. Now before I got here, I, before we started the tape I should say, I went to the grinders and made sure all three tools were fully sharpened and ready to go. So I'm going to start off with my spindle roughing gouge through the decks. I've adjusted the tool rest. Now there's about a quarter of an inch clearance. Yeah, it's clear. I don't know about speed. This is set at uh, 1550, which is exactly where I'd like it to be. I was fortunate I didn't have to readjust the lathe. And what I have on here is a piece of sycamore, which is a fairly nice wood for stoppers. It's going to be a nice color. And I've got it held here between centers, and we're going to just make this round. So it's a little out of balance because one side is short, but that'll go away in just a few seconds. So let me turn it round and start setting some dimensional information on here and going on from there.
know it's not round yet for two reasons. Number one, I can hear it. Number two, I can feel the tool still advancing into the air where that one spot is, but I can also test it. Definitely not round. Keep going. Can you hear the difference here? Listen. You begin to start learning about how wood is behaving when you start hearing how the tool is cutting on the wood. I can begin to tell when it gets dull by the sound changing, and that's something you learn over time. Now, this was square. It's now somewhat round, but I have almost a three quarters of an inch clearance here, which I don't want. So I'm going to turn the lathe off, bring my tool rest into where I would like it again, recheck it. We still see the flats here. So now we'll go again. Now, I noticed it slipped there a second, which means that the collet is not as tight as I'd like it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock the spindle in the lathe for a second, and I'm going to tighten the knob on the drawbar to pull that in more rigidly. Unlock the spindle, we're free again. Since I pulled it in a little bit, this may be loose. And I advanced it about a quarter of a turn. We'll go back and finish roughing it out. round from here down to here. There's a little spot that's not quite a round, but I'm going to turn that down into a bead. Remember, beads, we live with them. So that'll go away. So one thing I notice is the bottom of this is not square to the collet, which means when the dowel was screwed in, glued in, it wasn't glued in properly and straight. So I'm going to very carefully go in with my parting tool to try to square that off. So the bottom now is running true and square, so when I glue that to the cork, it's going to sit nice and smooth. So now it's down to doing some shaping. And most of my shaping will be done with a shallow fluted gouge. So I'm thinking this needs to come down to maybe about that big around, and then try to shoot for something like I did here. So I think I'll go back to my uh, roughing gouge, take some more off. Why not? I've just used the roughing gouge to only reduce a portion of this. If you look in the textbook, you will find a number of drawings, illustrations of various options. But bottle stoppers do have a characteristic of something that you can grab hold of and pull. So I've got to be able to reach my fingers around whatever the shape is going to be to extract it from whatever I stuck it into, my olive oil bottle or whatever. So that base is about the right diameter. And I removed it with this tool because it was fast and it's easy. And actually, it didn't leave too bad of a finish. And I absolutely know this is sycamore now because I can see the grain pattern appearing in it. So now I'll go on to my shallow fluted gouge, completing the shaping here on this end. I decided I wanted it just a little bit smaller, so I used the gouge to do that. 
I think I'm going to do this left-handed. So my index finger's here, rolling it be this direction. Decided this is much longer than what I need, so I'm just removing waste wood on this side. So as I begin to turn the bead, it's easy to complete the curve. I need to pull this in tighter. More waste wood needs to be removed. I think I'll do wrestle with my right hand. Waste wood. Finger on top because I'm going to go this way. in turning stoppers. I'm down to very little wood here and the moment I start pushing hard I still could snap the dowel. I still could have all sorts of problems so my cuts along this surface here need to be small, delicate, and suitable for uh, finishing up. What I'm going to do is literally part off by turning my bead here, coming in with a little bit of coal on this side until this wood here literally just stops turning. Waste wood. Bead side. Oh, I'm way over on the side of the bead, so I'm starting with the tool already rotated over. Finding the cutting edge. There it is. Now, I could have pushed that through. I don't want to do that. I want to cut it. Back to the beading tool. So this isn't turning. Which means I parted it off. So I have just a little bit of a dimple here, so sanding should be pretty simple. Now we've not done any real heavy duty sanding. We did a little bit on the last project and this one will be pretty much the same. So I've cut three pieces of sandpaper. I have a piece of 220, a piece of 180, and a piece of 120. Now the numbers appear on these, but this one it didn't, so I wrote on it so I don't get them confused. I now know this is 120. Now sanding here on the end is the hardest area. The reason is the wood isn't moving very much, so I have to keep my hand moving. As I come up around the curve, I have a little bit of movement in the wood, which helps. And I'm going to examine it, and I'm going to sand with the direction of the grain a little bit, especially over this end grain area, which is the hardest part to sand. And it looks pretty clean, frankly. That's nice. Give myself some more working room. 180. Again, harder part, easier part. Round the curve, up the side. Repeat the in direction along the grain. Sand it. And last is my 220.
Now there's still a little bit of wood at the bottom that needs to be cleaned up a little bit. So I'm taking and driving this out just a little bit. So I can get in here and kind of clean that bottom edge up a little bit. I might put a decorative line on this just for fun. Let me think. I'm going to have to use, well that tool doesn't make a groove very well, does it? What tool did we use to groove? Seems to me like that's the skew chisel. I better get it back out. Hadn't planned on doing this, so I might as well. Skew chisel standing on edge. We're clear. Three small lines. The rattling is this knob is loose down here. Make that go away. Take my burning wire, the rest is out of the way. Burning wire does have handles, that helps. Smoke. Smoke. Now because I burned it, it means that I'm going to have to go back and re-sand with the last grit because the burning has raised the grain just a bit. So you can't see it on camera, but I really could see that that cleaned up those lines very nicely. Just touching it, it's done. So now finish, and what I've decided to use again is our walnut oil. It's a quick, it's an easy finish. I can put this on with the lathe off. Work some in. Now the side grain will take up a certain amount, but the end grain is going to take up more. So putting a little extra back down here is a good idea. Now the walnut oil does not shine up bright, but I can't burnish it until my fingers get warm. That'll cause it not to be sticky when I pick it up later. And I'm holding the dry paper towel against the wood, waiting for a little heat to build up, which has done. And you can go back and add more coats if you wanted to later. This stopper I did prior to making this video, it has one coat of walnut oil on it, it's walnut. And after drying for a few days, I went and buffed it. And while it's not really shiny, it's picked up a little bit of sheen through through buffing. So, so now we make it out of here. Mount a cork on it. And for glue, I generally just use a little bit of our regular original tight bond on the cork and kind of screw it on. Uh, if a little bit of the dowel protrudes through, then maybe hitting it with a little sander on the very end to make sure these two surfaces are matching and smooth. Like this. In this case, the older one, uh, the dowel had stuck through slightly, and I just simply sanded it back down so it's even with the cork. So, what this lesson included was using a new way of holding things, a collet chuck. Uh, these can be purchased through your woodworking, your wood turning suppliers or through some uh, inexpensive machinist suppliers like Little Machine Shop in Pasadena. This 3816 thread on a um, 5 8 dowel, Morris Taper 2, it was about $15. So we held it differently. We again are still continuing to use our beading techniques to complete the bottom of this and we have another shape of bottle stopper. So again, you're going into your junk pile and finding these little blocks of wood, getting some dowels, a couple of drill bits, and you're in business for preparing your next set of Christmas gifts. We'll see you in the next lesson.
Another admonition. I said that there needs to be handles on these wires, and when they get really long like this, sometimes the tendency to say, well, I'll just wrap it around my finger and short it. You do that, you're going to be a nine finger turner pretty quick. So don't ever wrap a burning wire around your finger. If it's too long, cut it off, put another handle on it. This was designed for putting around big projects, but it worked just fine on this little one, as long as I held on to it properly. Don't take that risk.